screen here. The interactive SQL, there's, there's two types. It's interactive and embedded SQL. The interactive SQL is where you write your reports, and then the embedded is where you put it on a menu so that other people can run the reports, but they may not have access or knowledge to write them. What I'm going to do is in this webinar is geared towards the beginner and intermediate. Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. A lot of this is going to look familiar, but again, see, seeing it more than once really helps as well. Um, and I'm not going to dive right in. The first thing I want to do is I want to talk about tables. And just to give you a background of, of what tables to use when you write reports. And then I'm going to talk about um, the wizard versus non-wizard. I'm going to show you some printing options, some report options, and then after about 15 minutes, then we're really going to get into writing the reports. But the first 15 minutes is going to be a real overview of what the interactive and embedded SQL really would do for you and, and what, how to use it. So uh, what you're looking at right now is, is Room Master. And if you have the Premier Edition, you're simply going to click on Tools and Interactive SQL Report. This is how you get into it. You have to be a manager to get into it. Uh, this is to write the reports. So if you don't see that option, then most likely you're not set up as a manager. Now when you go in there, it looks uh, simple. Uh, the, the left side is where you're going to generate where you're going to create your report and the right side is what we call the tables and the tables are where the data for room master exists there's over 150 tables and so but but when you're writing reports you really only need to know 10 or less so it's not that hard a lot of a lot of the the tables um as you can see, they have descriptions, so it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. But what I want to do is I want to talk about the common tables, tables that a beginner would use to write your simple everyday reports. Now, on the right, you see the tables, and, and I can scroll right through here, and you can see there's a lot of them. And the ones in blue are Room Master tables, specific to Room Master. And the ones in green are the ones that are specific to point of sale. If we go to the bottom, there's a couple here with a, uh, with a, with a magnifying glass, and those are called views. And what those are is, is it's, it's like a table, but it has some special information uh, that uh, more like configuration information, as you can see, hold types, room types user field descriptions, the, um, the names of the users in the system, uh, the names of the users in the point of sale system, things like that. Now when you're looking at all those tables, on the, uh, you can actually filter them down because right now it shows all tables. So this means we're looking at all the tables. Now if you pull this down, you'll see that we can now filter that list to make it easier. Uh, so you can look at just a, a certain group of tables so you can find what you're looking for faster. So all room, all tables would be everything. The room master tables, just the ones that are specific to room master or point of sale. So if you were writing a point of sale report, you could click on here and it will filter the list down just to these particular tables. And some of you that are in this webinar right now have been in the wizard or like to use the wizard. This goes into the wizard. So if you know that you're writing a point of sale report and you're using the wizard before you even go into the wizard, then you want to uh, filter that. Okay, just 
give me one second. Okay, so um, I just had to fix one thing on my computer. Okay, so as you can see, if we pull this down more, then you have tables that are specific to folios and history. So if you knew you were writing against folios, you would click on there. So let's just click on that. And you can see it breaks it down even farther where it's, these are just the tables if you were going to do something that re, with regards to folios or history and so on. So you can see that it's easier. And then notice that I did do folios in history. So if I go into the SQL wizard, as some people are, been here, we're going to go here later, but I want to show you now that those are the only tables that appear in this list as well. So if you set the filter on the main screen, that filter will come in and be that filter on the SQL wizard. Okay, so let's just talk about some, some common tables. And these are the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you five common tables. So very, so of all these tables, just concentrate on these five. Reserve, reservations, the most common one is reserve. That's where all your reservations are. So if you click on F5 and everybody knows the F5 screen, this is the reserve file. This information that you see here is on the reserve file. The information that you see all in here, that's the reserve file. Now, um, the next table that's, that's the most interesting is Folio HD. And this is once they've become a guest. These are all your folios. So these are the, the guests in house. So you have the reserve, which is the reservations, and then the folio HD, which is the, the folios. Now, once they check out, where do they go? They go to history. And so they go over to hist head. So we have reserve, which is prior, folio head, which is now, and hist head, which is history. So, so you have your reservations, then your folios, than your history. So really those three tables are very popular when writing reports. Another one that's very popular is the guest profiles. Everybody knows guest profiles, back office, excuse me, back office, guest profiles. This information where you have the total sales, the email address, you're gonna do um, labels or you're gonna do an email extract guest profiles. That table is called VIP file, which originally was named that way because it was very important people. So this is what, if you're wondering why it's called VIP file, not guest profiles, it's very important people. Um, so it's the VIP file. That's where your guest profiles are. So if you have reserved, folio head, his head, and VIP file. If you concentrate on those four, that's going to be a majority. And then I'm just going to go over two more. Rooms. This is your room setup, the listing of your rooms. If you have 23 rooms in your property, you have 23 records in the rooms file. This is your rooms, 101, 102, 103. And if we expand it right here, this shows us the fields that are in there, the room number, the bed type, the description, the current status of the room. So that's that's what's in the rooms file. And the last one I want to point to is simply room book. These are the room numbers that are assigned to your reservations. So if you have one reservation for three rooms, then you'll have one record in reserve, which is my reservation, and then you'll have three records in room book, which are the rooms for those three rooms for that reservation, like they're assigned to room 101, 102, and 103. So you have your reserve file, confirmation number one, 
and let's say confirmation number one has three rooms assigned to it, confirmation number one will have three records in room book and the three room numbers that are assigned to it. Again, 101, 102, 103. So those are the six files I want you to know. Reserve, Folio Head, His10, VIP File, Rooms, and Room Book. Very, very, just to get started, if you want to play and write your first reports, stay with those six files. And again, point of sale, you can just simply click on point of sale, and those are just the point of sale tables if you really want to get just into the point of sale. And these are the main files for point of sale uh, right here. The, this is your, this is what's going on in point of sale right now, POS log D, DT and POS log head. That's your current checks and your current check detail, and then your history checks and your history detail. If you look at those six files, these are the most popular ones if you're doing point of sale. Okay, so let's talk about Freeform versus the wizard. And I'm going to set this back to all tables. This is where you can write an SQL statement. This is Freeform. So if you knew SQL, you could type it and get your report. So you can see I said, give me everything from the reserve file. And up on the screen comes a list of all my reservations. This is what we call where you type Freeform. But if you've never done SQL or understand SQL, you don't need to understand it because we have a wizard right here which writes it for you. So the wizard is where you're going to go to write your reports. So we're going to go right across the top here. Uh, this is your simple cut, copy, paste. This is how you can do set up some uh, queries that you run all the time. You can put them in here as macros so you don't have to type them. And this is where you can look at the tables. Right here, all the tables are right here. But if you click here, it's another way of looking at the table where not only can you look at the table, but you can look at the data that's inside the table. So for instance, if we go to the reserve file, and here are all the fields, we can click on state and say, oh, OK, this is the data that's inside. These are the different states or bed type, I don't know what bed type means. I click there, oh, that's where I put my deluxe penthouse suites and superiors. So if you, if you don't know what a field means, you can click on it and it'll tell you what type of data is inside there. I don't know what rate, REQ means. Oh, that's the rate types of oh, my AAA, that's where the rate types are. So you can actually go through here if you want, just click on here. And it will show you all the different pieces of data that would appear in that particular field. And what this is down on the bottom is just a unique list of all the different unique values that are inside that field. So if I click on entered by, these are probably my, my staff members initials plus my world link in my kiosk. So that, that's what that is. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just actually run some reports first before we write them so you can see the, the functionality of once you write a report, what you can do with it. So um, what we're in here is called interactive SQL, which means interactively we're writing the report. We're writing it now. Embedded is I've already written it and I've embedded it into the Room Master Reports menu so that my staff can run the report later on, tomorrow, next week, during the audit, or my accounting staff wants to run these reports at the end of the month. And so that's embedded and that would be when you put them on the Reports menu. And as you can see right here, we have two embedded reports that, that I have, that I've written previously, that I've embedded into the reports menu, guess who spent more than, and guess who spent more than, and I did it as a graph, so I can look at it two ways. And I'm going to show you how to put those on the menu later. So what we're going to do is we're just going to double click on here, and you can, when you write a report, 
You can also have the system prompt for different values so that the report can run with certain selection criteria. Maybe I want everybody who spent more than X dollars or I want the reservations for a certain date. You pick the date, you tell me what date. But in this particular case, I wrote a report that is saying, give me everybody who spent more than X dollars with us. And the prompt field comes up and allows the end user to key something in. So I'm going to say, give me a list of everything, everybody who spent more than $20,000 with me. So when you click on it, the report runs. So what it does is what we call a grid view. This is it in a grid. So you can look at it on the screen. But if you want to print it, you click on reports. And then this is your, your report where you can actually print it. Or you, you, if you don't want to print it, you can PDF and email it. So here is a report that I've written. So once you get to writing reports, you'll be able to write something that looks like this. And it does uh, uh, the number of records for you, and it knows if it's a numeric field to write, justify it properly, and things like that. And this is the selection criteria. So it's saying when the person ran this report, it asked them to enter a sales total, and the person entered 20,000. So your selection criteria is going to can appear right here. Okay, so one of the, the advantages to writing a, your own report is once the report displays in grid view, you do have some flexibility. So here we are looking at the report that somebody wrote for me and they put it on a menu. So now I'm an end user on the front desk clerk, I'm the accountant person, and I ran the report. This is on the screen. Now I can actually say, well, I can see that they've sorted it in sales total, but you know what? I want to look at it in last name. So the end user can simply click on last name and it will resort on that column. So notice all I did was click on last name. It resorted. Now when I print the report, it is in last name order. So I want you, everybody to know that once the report is written, the user does have the ability to click right on any of these columns and resort them. Another thing they have the ability to do is they can filter. So here is somebody wrote a report for you that you entered a value, which is $20,000. Now the, let's say the end user says, I, thank you for this report, but I am only list, interested in the Florida people. They could actually, instead of just clicking on state, they can right click. So with the right mouse button, we can click and it finds all the unique values. So I can click on Florida and now it filtered the list down to just the Florida people. And again, when I now hit report, I can get the Florida people. Notice I, there was 16 records in the query. It, it wants you to know that, but you filtered it. You filtered it down to only the Florida people. So you do have the ability that when the report is written uh, and displayed on there, you do have the ability to filter and sort it another way. If you want to get rid of the filter, just right click and hit clear filter. And if you want to resort it back to the regular, val uh, just click on the first column. This is to, like, for instance, if I sort this by state and I want to bring it back to the original sorting, I can click on this first the number column, and they'll put it back to the, the original way. Not only can you do a report, but you can also do labels. So here we are, we're looking at this, the user, uh, the, our manager set up a, a, a query for us, we ran it, we're looking at it, but we said, you know what, we like this information and we want to send a letter to these people that have spent over $20,000 and I like to do it in labels, so Avery labels. So here I am looking at this data, I said, well, you know what, I want to get some labels out of it. So you can click on the button here called labels. So long as you have first name, last name, and your, your, your address information in here, you can get that out of labels. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go in here, but 
there's a couple of features that are brand new in the upcoming version. So if you don't see them on your screen, you will next week. But, but really the whole functionality is there. So I'm going to click on labels and I have all these options of all these different Avery labels and Unistat labels, different types of labels. We're just going to go with the 5160. And we're going to say, yeah, we want to create labels from this. But there's a couple of things here before I start the label that I want to get rid of. If I create a label, a mailing label, I definitely don't want to put the sales total or the email address on the label. I don't, I'm, I'm, do, I'm sending this to the post, so I don't want to put that information. So really, the max columns that I'm interested in is the first six. So I'm going to change this to six because I only am interested in the first six columns. I don't care about the rest. Another thing I want to do is I want to combine the first and last name because I've not done that here. And I also want to combine the city, state, and zip because I want to take these three together and combine them. That's all I need to do. Once I hit OK, boom, I have my labels. I can print these labels and mail them out. Now, let's say I printed out some labels yesterday and now I'm stuck with a half a sheet of paper labels. Let's just say the first 16 labels are, are empty because I've already unpeeled them. I peeled them off. You can go in and say, well, the first 16 are blank. I don't want to print on those because I've already peeled those off. So you can say 16. Now when you print, it knows where to start so you don't waste label paper feed it back into the printer, it'll skip those first 16 and then continue on. So that's how easy it is to take a report and move it right over into a report or labels, sort it, filter it, change it around very easily. And then the final thing that you can do with data is you can graph it. So I'm going to do that same report, but I'm going to say $20,000. I've gotten rid of a lot of the data in this particular query that I don't need for a graph. And when you click on export, there is an option as a chart. So you can actually take the data and chart it. So here I am taking the, the, the first, the, the people who spent $20,000 and I put them on a pie chart. And then real quick, it's a couple of things I can do here. Like for instance, here's all the people who spent over 20, but the numbers are kind of weird. So I can go in here and change that format to look like money. And that's simply putting an M there in brackets. And then it will, will fill, make it look nice. And I can do that in a funnel chart or pyramid, different things. I can print this, I can bring it to a presentation. So you can take the data. What I'm showing you is the end result. Why are we writing all these queries? Because you can do a lot with these queries once you write them, graph them, export the data. You can label the data. You can, you can send it out to uh, an XML file. You can send it out to a HTML report. You can send it to Excel. You can do a lot with it. So you, you want to learn how to write these because you can, because in the end you can do a lot with it. So I hope I piqued your interest into as to why you want to learn to write SQL queries. So now that we've hopefully piqued your interest as to why, let's go ahead and start learning how to write these queries. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Tools, Interactive SQL. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do everything in the wizard because I am assuming that everybody here is a beginner and they don't know how to write an SQL query like this, which, which actually would look like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to blank this out and we're going to do it in the wizard. Wizard does everything for you. So click on wizard. And on the, on the, the pull down up there are the tables. These are the tables that I went over at the beginning of the webinar. 
and I mentioned reserve, folio head, hist head, VIP file, rooms, and room book. And we're going to do a report from one of those six. And we're going to use the rooms file because I'm going to write a simple housekeeping report, a report that's simply a listing of the rooms and their statuses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the rooms file. And when I click on tables, rooms, all the fields that are inside the rooms file appear. And this is what's available to me this is what's going to appear on the report. So all I'm doing is moving the field from the left to the right. I want this one. I want this one. I want this one. It's very easy. So you can do it two ways. You just click on the, the field and say move it over. Or you can just simply double click on the field. When you do the um, move over, what's good about it is it moves it over and it moves the cursor down to the next one. So you can just simply just keep going right through. So I have the room number, the bed type, the description, and the status. And there's one more I want because if the status is unavailable, then I, I want to get the date that it's unavailable to, which would be the out of order to date, the end date of the unavailable. So those are really the only fields I want. So what I've done is I've said I want these five fields to appear on my report. Now, if I just have finished right now, what I'm going to end up with is just a, a list of the rooms in any order, all of the rooms right on my report. So I really want to always go through next, next, next. I want to go through next because I want the wizard to walk me through everything so I don't miss anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit next. And then it says, what records do you want included in the query? If you don't put anything here, you get everything. The last thing you want to do is select the history table, which is everyone that's ever stayed at your hotel, and not put some something here, or you'll end up with a million records. You'll end up with a thousand pages in your report. So that's something you really don't want to do. So if you're if you're doing a reservation list, what date do you want the reservations for? If you're doing a history, what is the range of dates that you're looking for? So this is this is like a filter. This is saying what records do I want? But in this particular case for a housekeeping report, we probably want everything. But to show you how this works, let's just skip our meeting rooms because the housekeepers don't clean the meeting rooms. So what we'll do is we'll say where the bed type is not equal to the meeting room. So what we're saying is, is we want every room except for the ones that have a, a, a room type, a bed type of meat. So once you fill out this three pieces of information, field, a what we call an operand, and a value, you hit add, which moves what you've just done up here so that you can go and add more criteria. So you could say, I want this date range for this bed type for, and they have to be in this particular state, or you, you can add more and more and more. And as you add it up here, it's all and. So it's in this, in this, it's got to meet all this criteria. Once it meets all this criteria, then we will select that. But you can change that to an or. If you click on the bubble here called or, then it would only be everything or this, or this, or this. The most common one to do is and. We only have one criteria in here, so we really don't care about and or ors because there's only one. But if you're going to do multiple, you need to know whether you're doing an and or an or. So this is really the only thing we want. We want everything that's not equal to meet. So once we've done that, we'll move on with our next. And then the next thing it wants to know is the order. You've told me you want the rooms. You told me you want you want to exclude the meeting rooms. Now when I print the report, how do you want this to appear? If I don't put anything in here, then randomly my rooms are going to appear on the report. And I definitely don't want a report that says 201, 305, 101, 105, 102. I would probably want 
101, 101. Down right here and say I want it in room number order. And I can even say ascending or descending. Do I want to go? Uh, 309, 308, 307, or do I want to go 307, 308, 309? Now, if you, if there are, if the records being selected will have the same value, then you need a, you need to add an additional sort. In this particular case, we only have a one room or 101. We only have one 102. We only have one room that's a 103. But if we were doing something like give me all the guests that are coming in tomorrow, we may have two Smiths. We may have three Joneses. We may have, you know, four Whites. So if I'm going to sort by last name, just in case there's people with the same last name, I would use a secondary sort, which would be the first name. That way I would get the A whites before I get the B whites and then the C whites. So it's important to know your order. So if once you hit that unique value, you really don't need any more sorting. This is real simple. I just want them in room number order. So I really don't need to go farther. But I have up to four ways to sort it. When I hit next, I really, now I get just a bunch of random options, which are more like fine tuning the report. A lot of times you really don't need to worry about these, but there's a couple of things you can do here saying, I only want a maximum of 50 records. I, I, I want to hide the detail. I want to group it together. I want to do some spacing options or things like that. What we'll do is we'll skip all this for now um, and uh, we'll go over it later if we have some time. Next, now this is really the last page. I'm going to hit next, which is really hitting finish. And what it did is it wrote the report for me. So now to run it, I can do two things. I can click on run query or I can hit the F9 key on the keyboard. F9 executes the query, same as hitting run query. And when you run it, boom, we've just written our first housekeeping report and we can hit report. And Here's our report, it's as simple as that. We've got our room numbers nicely put in order, 102, 103, 104. We've got our bed types, we've got some descriptions, we got the status of the room and the out of order date. As I scroll through, I have my information, I can PDF it and I can put it on a report a menu and I can let other people run it. So it's as simple as that. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna clean this report up. For instance, looking at these titles, 0002 date doesn't make much sense. Room status is taking up too much room. And uh, maybe we don't want room number, we want it to look nicer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close out of here. I'm gonna go back into my wizard. And this is where you can clean up those titles. You can do it two ways. You can manually do it by going into each one and putting what you want where we gave you a little fast switch right here called fix all titles. When you click on fix all titles, what it does is it will put a nice title next to everything it can that it thinks you want to use. So let's just run it as, as is. And then what it is, it fixed them so it looks nicer. What it does is it uses the description rather than the field name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the wizard and I'm going to show you how to manually fix those. So if I, all you have to do is double click on it and we don't want it to say room number, we want it to just say room. Oops, I forgot to capitalize the T over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to capitalize the T and make it look a little nicer. We don't need description of rooms. We just want it to say description. So you can see just how easy this is. We can just make it say status. And instead of saying unavailable end date, we can just simply say unavailable until. Now I can go next, 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 or when I'm done, I can hit finish. 
I can run the query, run the report, and look, look how nice that looks. It's perfect. So the next thing I want to show you is, as you can see, this is the status of the room, V being vacant, O being unoccupied. D is dirty and U is unavailable. Now, if I were to give this to the housekeeping staff, they may come to you and say, what's V mean? What's O mean? Is that occupied or out of order? I don't know. So what we're going to do here is we're going to fix these values so that so instead of saying V, we want it to say vacant. Again, I'm going right back into the wizard. And that's that room status field that we want to clean up. So we're going to simply double click on status. And there's a tab here called change field values. If we click on there, it gives us the ability to take a value and make it say something else. And you can do this for anything. Like let's say you want to do it for states. If it says FL, I want it to say Florida. Um, you can do it for really uh, any type of, of, of status or value. But we're going to do it for these statuses. So we're just going to say, if it's V, we want it to say vacant. And you can just hit the enter key or, or hit add. So it's saying, if it equals V, we want to convert it to vacant. If it says O, we want it to say occupied. If it says D, we want to change it to dirty. If it says U, we want to change it to unavailable. And then there's an else down here, which says if it doesn't equal any of these values, then we're going to put something else here. Let's just say no clue. We don't know what's going on. It, it definitely shouldn't happen, but we can put anything we want there. Come and, come and ask. Check with desk. We, we don't know, maybe a room master messed up or something like that. So we're going to hit OK, hit Finish, and you wrote this nice complicated query, but you really, really did it all through the wizard. Run the query, run the report, and now it looks perfect. So that's really writing us a, a simple housekeeping report. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to show you how to take this report and put it on a menu. So once you write the query, then you can go to the reports menu as a manager, go to the custom reports, or maybe you can even go into housekeeping because this happens to be a housekeeping report. Some people like to put all their custom reports down here in custom reports, but if you want one to, let's say it's specific to accounting, you can go in and put it under the accounting to give just the people that have access to the accounting group access to that accounting report. Same with housekeeping. So what we'll do is we'll do it on housekeeping. So we can do it two ways. We can highlight housekeeping and have properties, or we can highlight housekeeping and right click with the right mouse button. And we can just say add a report. So we're adding a report to the housekeeping section. Give it a title. And it is an embedded SQL report. So you do have to click on that button. It says embedded SQL report because it's not a clearing report or a crystal report. It's an embedded report. Click on this button right here, SQL statement. So you can put that in there. And what happens is the screen opens up that you are used to by going into interactive SQL. Now there's two things that, that you can do here. You can hit the back button right here, which is the previous statement you've written, which will bring back what we've just written in this session. So as long as you haven't signed out of Room Master, you can hit the back button to bring up the last query that you've written. Or another thing you can do is just go into the SQL wizard button and it remembers everything that you did, that you've been doing, Again, provided that you haven't signed off. So you could just go in there and then hit the finish button or next, 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 and it will rewrite it. So those are two ways. And then you just hit the green check mark and OK. So what you've done now is you've created 
the report in Interactive SQL, you've come over to Reports menu, you've right-clicked on Housekeeping, clicked on Add Report, Embedded SQL Report, and here it is. So now the end user at any time, the front desk clerk or the accounting, uh, the housekeeping staff can click on here and they get what you did without seeing the, qu the query information, just simply, and they can run the report to the printer and that's how easy it is. And again, maybe they want only the penthouses. So they can right click like I showed at the beginning of the webinar, click on pent and then hit report and then they've taken the report that you've written, filtered it down even more and now that you can see it all comes around, there's a lot of flexibility for everybody. So there you go. Now, since I've added this to the housekeeping group, it even shows up in housekeeping. So if I click on housekeeping reports, notice it's right there. So they can even access that report that you've just written right on the uh, housekeeping menu right through there. So I'm gonna do one more query, which is now it's gonna be, we're gonna build on this query and make it, we're gonna start at the beginner level, just put a little bit of intermediate in there. Again, tools, interactive SQL. Let's go right to the wizard. And before I um, start over, I want to save this query. I want to I want to save it just in case next week, next month, next year, I want to come back and maybe uh, modify it. What I do is I hit save specification. And I give this a name, so you can say my first housekeeping report. And what happens is I've saved this wizard. So now if I do sign off and sign back in, notice I've lost everything. There is no back button because once you sign off, it clears your, your session. You would go in to do load specification, click on what you saved it as, a QWS query wizard specification, and it brings everything in. So now maybe you want to say, okay, like a couple of days later, you decided to do something else, like how many times this room has been used this year and last year. So now, now what you've done is you've, you've, you've added more fields to that query, but you've saved the specification so that you can modify it later. So remember to save it. When you want to start over, there's a button here called reset. When you reset, it's, it clears everything in the wizard. It's, you better have saved what you've worked on. Um, I, th I believe the system will come up and warn you that you haven't saved it, but, um, just save your number. If you hit reset, you're starting over. And what we're going to do now is we're going to write a simple check-in reservations report, a report that will just list everybody who's checking in for a certain date. So remember those tables that we went through at the beginning, uh, reserve is the reservation table. So we're clicking the reservation. We want the confirmation number. We want the last name and the first name. We definitely want their check-in date, their check-out date. We need their room type and the number of rooms. Let's just say that's all we need. We can click on fix all titles. We don't want, we know that the confirmation number is really up to seven digits. There's no reason to have a huge title like this because if you do, the title ends up being four times bigger than what the, the column should be. So you've really wasted space. Remember, you only have eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So when you write these reports, you, you don't want to have a title that's so huge over the data that you've, that you've now run the, date, the report 
uh, information off the side of the report. So in this particular case, um, we just like to, to just say. to do something like this, but try to stay away from, from, from weird stuff like this. You'll be happy you did. Last name, first name, it looks like a date. Why do we have to say it's a date? Let's just clean this up and get rid of the word date. So I'm starting to write my reservation check-in report. So this is good enough. Uh, and uh, so I hit next. Now, if I don't put a filter in here, I'm going to end up with every reservation in the system. I definitely don't want 10,000, 20,000 records printing. I don't want thousands of pieces of paper. So make sure you get a filter on here. Now, if you're building this report for yourself right now, which is a one-time run, you're just doing this because it's a one-off, then you could say, I want everything for March 22nd. But if you're going to put this on a rep on a menu or you're going to do different things with it in the future, then you don't want to hard-code a date in. You want to allow the user to pick the date. So we're just going to say, pull this down, and we're going to say the check-in date is equal to, and instead of picking a date here, we're going to say enter check-in date. We got to hit that add button to bring it up here. So what this does is it says instead of us telling you right now as we're writing report what date we want, we want every time you run the report what date the user is going to put in the date. Now here's where the and comes in. If we don't put anything more in here, we're going to end up with every reservation for the particular date that the user enters. This could be dangerous, so remember this. If you take away something from from this webinar and you're going to write reservation reports, know this, please. The last thing you want to do is write a report for reservations but fail to take out those canceled reservations. If you do, I mean, if you forget, then you're going to run this report, you're going to give it to the user, you're going to put on a menu, they're going to run it, and they're going to look at all these reservations and say, yep, these, all, these people are all coming in today, but guess what? Maybe one of those are canceled. You definitely don't want canceled reservations. So not only do we want the reservations for the date that the user enters, we want to make sure that the status, the reserve status, is an R, which is reserved. We don't want the wait list. We don't want the gift card. We don't want the canceled. We only want the reserved ones. We don't want the ones that have checked in already. We want the reserved ones. So if you're writing a reservation report, nine times out of ten, you're going to put reserve status equals R. Maybe you're writing a list of everybody who canceled. Then you would say reserve status equals C for canceled. Canceled gift card, history, in-house, reserve. These are all in the, in the help text, in the, in, the, uh, in the Premier Edition SQL table section. So if we go into help, it'll, it will list what these mean. That's canceled, gift card, history, in-house, and reserve. We only want the reserve ones. Now here's a case where yes they could maybe we want to put these in confirmation number order let's do that or maybe you want to put that in last name order remember we may have multiple last names but we need to go further into first names maybe we we even have two Robert Parisi's check it in so maybe we need a third sort which is the confirmation number once we get the confirmation number we know we have a unique sort we don't need to go any further but this could be a standard if you're writing a reservation report by name order, then this is a good thing that you want to do. Last name, first name, confirmation number. That creates a unique sort in, in a very good order.
let's change this to maybe one and a half spacing because we want to give the uh, front desk clerk enough room to write. Maybe they want to put notes or something like that. So now I'm going to run this query and notice what happens. A calendar comes up because we said when we wrote the report, we said let the user pick the date. So when you have, when you let the user do it, then they just double click here. Let's say we want everything for tomorrow and boom, here we go. And if I hit report, perfect. It's in last name order, first name. Notice we have three Charleses. So now the third sort of comes into play for the confirmation number. Okay, so pretty easy? I hope so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add two bits of information to this report to show you how to go and get data from another table. In this particular case, there's a couple of things we want to do for this report to make it kind of cool. We need to, to add the room number. So let's just say we want to add the room number. And remember at the beginning of this webinar, we said room book, room book. That's where the, the room numbers that are assigned to reservations are found in the room book file. Because if I go to the wizard and I look through this list, I don't see any room number. I'm going fast because I know the answer. There is no room number field in the reserve file. The reason there isn't is simply because it could equal more than one value. They could have one room assigned, 10 rooms assigned, 50 rooms assigned. Room master allows you to do that. So it's, it's what we call a, a secondary table. So we have to go out to another table to get that information and that's in room book. So we're going to change to room book, room bookings, and simply here's the room number. The from and to date is, is the check-in date and check-out date. The confirmation is, is the corresponding one. The entered by is the person who actually assigned the room at that time. It could be different than the person who created the reservation. And then the rest is uh, you can ignore. Right? This is the date that, that they that they actually assign the room booking at maybe another date other than when the reservation was made. But we only want the room number. So we're going to take that room number. We're going to move it over. Now, if we don't like where it's positioned, we can use these up and down arrow keys to move them. So we can move that field so that it appears in a different place. But I like where it is. It's right here. And I'm going to double click on here and I'm going to type room. So this is the room that's assigned. And I can hit next or finish, but either or, it doesn't matter uh, if I hit finish, if the system's going to go to this screen. And this screen is how are the tables related. It's saying you can't get out now. I'm not going to let you finish this query because you, you've selected another table. And you need to tell me how these two tables are related. Meaning, when I get a reservation for Chuck Denae, how do I know what room numbers are assigned to Chuck Denae? Now, we all know that how do you, how do you link these together? By the confirmation number. The, confirm, the rooms for confirmation one are over here. The rooms for confirmation number two are here. So it's saying, I need to connect to room book using reserve, and how do I do it? And we've made this so easy for you. All you do is click on create join, and we will put the information in there for you. If there's no information that appears in the join columns, then you've most likely connected some tables together that had no common link. They didn't belong. For instance, connecting a reserve reservations table to say the point of sale checks. There's absolutely, there's no reason that you would connect what somebody's eating in the restaurant with 
their reservation that's coming in the future. The, the, the two don't make any sense. So if the link doesn't make any sense, there'll be no join columns. This will be blank, and chances are you've, you're doing something that doesn't make sense to the computer. But you do have to do the join type. You do have to pick one of these bubbles. And they're real. It's in English, so it's, it's pretty easy. It's saying only include rows where the join fields from both tables exist. What that means is don't only accept the reservation, only print the reservation record if there's a room assigned. Well, there may be a chance that you didn't assign a room number, so we definitely don't want that. The second one says include all rows in reserve even if no match in room book. That's saying if I have a reservation, it doesn't have any rooms assigned to it, I still want to print the record. That definitely makes a lot of sense. That's what we want. So um, that's important because we may have had a reservation that doesn't have a room assigned and we still want it to print on the arrivals list so that the clerk can see that and go back and assign a room. So that's all we're doing here and then hitting OK, hitting finish, and then it writes the query for you. We're going to run that query. It remembers the last date that you entered, so you can actually have the system prompt again or just keep using this date. We do this just to make it so when you're developing a query, it's faster. You shouldn't have to keep putting in the date over and over again. Here we go. We have our room number. Perfect. So that's how easy that is. We've taken the reserve file and we've linked to room book. Okay, we have a, uh, just a couple more minutes left, but I want to do one more link to another table, which is, which, um, which is the VIP file, which we've talked about, the VIP file being the guest profiles. And let's just say we're writing this arrivals list for tomorrow, but this is a management arrivals list where maybe it's a, um, a report that we only want our special guests. Maybe it's going to be given to the owner because the owner is interested in knowing who's coming tomorrow that spent a lot of money with us. We only we only care about the people that have given us more than two thousand dollars. So th this particular person, other than the owner, I don't want to say we we only care, but the owner only cares. So um, let's close out of here. Go back into the wizard. And we're going to go to the VIP file, Guest Profiles. And we're going to come down here to the Total Sales. There's four, there's, there's four fields. It's called Sales Total, Nights Total, Sales Year-to-Date, Nights Year-to-Date. These, these are some very interesting fields. You, 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 you'll use them often, I hope. This is the total money that they've spent, the total nights that they've spent there. Then this is the total money they spent this year and the number of nights they've spent this year. So you have, you can look at cumulative or just this year. So let's just look at cumulative everything. And let's move that one over. We like that sales total. Next or finish, and this is, hey, wait a second. You pulled in another file, VIP file, and again, you haven't told me how these are related. So if this was a conference that we're showing, I'd probably ask everybody to raise their hand if they know what the common link is. I hope that a lot of people would raise their hand because they know how do you, how do we link our, our, our reservations to our guest profiles? And I think everybody here knows we do that with the guest profile number. So the common link being the guest profile number. Every reservation has a guest profile number, so the link is the guest profile number. So we're going to just double click on here, and it says, yep, the VIP number. We know this makes sense to us. And again, let's look at this join type. It's important again. Only include rows where join fields from both tables exist. Well, if I have a reservation, that doesn't have a guest profile. Maybe it came in through roommaster.net and it hasn't been assigned a guest profile yet. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get it on this list. So we could click on here that would say include all rows in reserve even if there's no match in guest profile. What that's saying is, is 
give me everybody even if they don't have a profile assigned. In our particular case, this particular report, we probably want to do the top one because we're only interested in people that do have a profile that have given us $2,000. Wouldn't matter which bubble we pick because their value would be zero, but we're just going to click up here. So now it put the two links. As long as we have some links here going on, we can hit XXX or finish. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run this query. Just to show you, we have one more thing to do, but I'm going to run it. And now here are my people with my rooms assigned with the amount of money that they've spent. So I'm going to go back in here, back into my wizard. As you can see, when you build a report, you can keep, you don't need to do it all in one shot. You don't need to dive in, write the entire report or know what you're doing right off the bat. You can, you can, what we call build the report. You can do it little by little. I want more fields. I want more of this. I, I want to sort it a different way. You can keep doing it little by little till it gets to the point where you like it. Then when it gets, that's like you're, you're finished building it, then you can put it on a menu. Notice I did not have to do it all in one shot. So I'm going to go to next. These are all filled out. Next. And remember we said, give me the date. I only want my reserved. Let's do something one more. And that's going to be where the total sales is greater or equal to 20,000 in this particular case. It's kind of an odd value because we have a small database here and, and I'm using the, the database that we use in our company. And we tend to use the same guests all the time, the employees that work here. Um, you probably definitely use a different value than 20,000, but I'm just gonna use that as an example here. So we're saying, give me everybody who entered, who, who's coming in on a certain date, who's reserved, that is given us more than 20,000. So now when I run the report, only the people who have given us more than $20,000 appears in this report. This could be like a guest awareness report that you give to the owner so that he knows who's coming in on a particular day that, that's a high spending guest. So that, that's as easy as that to, to write that report. And the last thing I want to show you is the grid is that you do have the ability to do to to look at some of these values uh, and add them or, some, or, or 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 get averages. Like for instance, if I click on this value right here, and I click, let's say I say, oh, the top three people, how much did they give me? If I click there, I hold the shift key down, and I highlight those in the grid. In the bottom, it gives you the values right here. So it's just like Excel, where where you can actually click on certain things, and it says you've you've selected three items. The average of those three items is that, and the value is that. So if you just want to get an average of these people of what they spent, you can do that and say, okay, of of the average of these seven, the average is 135,000. So you can see you have all those options. So let's go put this on a menu one more time so that for practice, we're going to go over to reports. We're going to go to front desk because it's a front desk report. We're going to right click, hit add report. We'll call this high profile arrivals, embedded SQL report. Go into here, hit my back button, brings up my last query. Down here, there's two checkboxes, convert dates to Windows format and allow export of data. Allow export of data means do you want to allow the end user, the front desk clerk, the accounting person, to not only see this as a report, but allow them to export the data to a file, a CSV file, Excel file, HTML file. Do you, is this data okay for, for your employee to export? Maybe you know, want to make sure they don't want to take the data or steal it, so just be aware of that. So we're going to make sure you check that box so you don't get the export. I'm not going to check this box just to show you the difference. Boom, we've put this on the front desk menu. We run it. 
here's our data, there's our export button. If we didn't check that box, we wouldn't have gotten that. Now, notice the date is in what we call ISO International Standard. It's year, 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 month, month, day, day. That's a standard way that all dates are in the system. So if you query dates or enter dates or use dates in the system, you need to do it in an ISO standard. So if we run the report, that's what, what it looks like, year, month, day. But if you go into that report and you check the box to convert the dates to Windows format, it will put it in the date that's on that workstation to look this way. Like, I'm pointing down here on the bottom right hand corner, 321. So if you're in Australia, it knows to flip it to 21.3. So if I click that box and now I run the report, notice it puts it in the format that you're used to seeing in Room Master. So if you have written queries in the past and you have those dates appearing in your month day format and it's been annoying to you or you didn't know how to change them, that is how you can change it. And one last thing I want to show is totals is we have some rooms here and we have a sales total and maybe the owner wants to know the total number of high profile arrival rooms and the grand total. We can go into that report. And then we can highlight that field and see where it says no total. You're just going to say, I want to sum it. Go down to here, no total. No, I want to sum it. And you can do different things. You can count them. You can get an absolute count. A count is for every record, it counts it. One, two, three, four, five. An absolute count is it counts how many are non-blank, non-zero. So you may want to know how many people have children. So you could do an absolute count of children, which would tell you that of these 15 reservations, five of them have a child, at least one child. That's, how, that's what absolute count is. How many are non-blank and non-zero? You can do the average. And you can also do the min and max. So maybe what's the highest person, what's the lowest person, what's the highest value, the lowest value. So we'll sum that one too. And I'm going to run that report. I'm going to make one final change. Here we go. We totaled these. Now, one final change before we, we, um, we end here is does the owner really care that they spent 99 cents, 42 cents, 31 cents? Do they need all this data? When you're writing a report, take a look, really, you know, look at your report. How can you make it look better? How can you make it more readable? How can you make it more friendly? In this particular case, we really don't care the difference between $62,456 versus 42 cents. Do we really care? Do we really need this? Let's make this report more user friendly. So I'm going to go into the report. I'm going to click on that total. And we have a picture here. The picture is the way that the field looks. So when I click on, you can enter that here free form, but if you don't know how to do pictures, you just click on the dot, dot, dot. And it says, do I want to show it with a, do with a dollar sign? Sure, I'll show it with a dollar sign. That'll look cool. Um, and notice it says one, two, three, four with a comma. That's, that looks great. That's how we want to show it. If we did it like this, it would show the sense. But let's just show it without the decimal. So notice I clicked on that one with a dollar sign. So now I'll lop off the sense. Now I run my query. Perfect, perfect, perfect. It's a nice report. Notice I just clean that up. Okay, so I hope that you learned something, and I hope that I did as good as Christy. Uh, Christy, I think, can speak a little bit more clearer than I can. Uh, she's more of a, in, uh, a manager. I'm more of a nerd programmer, so I hope this was 
hope you were able to follow, um, but I did enjoy it. If we do have some webinars coming up, and those web we have uh, two webinars. Uh, one web if you go to inquest.com/webinars, then uh, you'll see that we have two. One is for the new release 15.5, which is coming out uh, April 2nd. And Christy is going to do a 30-minute webinar to go over all the new features in 15.5. It's, it's got a lot of enhancements. We even have a roommaster.net, brand new enhancement coming up that I think people are really going to love. So if you're using roommaster.net, make sure you show up. If you're using point of sale, you have to show up because point of sale is completely changed. Make sure you're there. Uh, and there's also some room master uh, enhancements. So I hope to see you at that webinar. Um, and I definitely appreciate everyone's time. Uh, one of the biggest questions that come up is, do you record these? Do you record these? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, we've been wor working on creating a library to record these videos. And once we get that library together, we're going to put that with our training videos. And we're going to be offering uh, CDs, uh, like seven or eight CDs, or one USB key, which is going to have a whole training video uh, on, on, on everything from yield management to room master to room master.net to point of sale to uh, a whole bunch of things. And then we're also going to include the webinars that Christy and I have done in the past and package that all up together as one big training uh, option. And we hope to uh, put that together soon and, and get that information out to you. But we have been recording these. It's just that putting these out on on, uh, on the web and releasing them to our customers is difficult for a lot of reasons. The, the main is just disk space and the gig and gig gigabytes of, we have 5,000 customers. We usually have two, three, four, and 500 people attending these webinars. So if you take a, um, these 150, 200 meg files and you put them out on the web and you have a thousand of our customers downloading it, it ends up becoming terabytes of, of, of disk um, usage that we really just don't have the, the mechanism to, to, to put out there. So we're looking for a way to, to handle that. So just be aware that we, we, we understand that people have been asking that and we are working towards getting that out. So we, so, so, so just be aware of that. And thank you very much for attending this webinar. And um, again, my name is Robert and have a great day.